This is the Dr. Fate figure from the current release of the Black Adam movie, and he looks totally different from the first release. Some of you may have that first copy, and some of you may have done some work to it yourselves. Well, on this particular one, this is a commission piece, so it is not mine, and I will be repainting the figure to a lighter shade of blue, and the cape will be replaced. Now, the owner has sent in not only the figure, but also the materials he needs for the cape and we'll be working with that and you'll see how that turns out so let's take a quick overview at what the figure consists of and our issues that are going to come across as we work on this figure and then i'll show you the cape making and installation let's get started Working on this figure was relatively simple because the figure itself not only comes apart easily, but the plastic itself really lends itself well for working on a repaint. Now the belt that you see here, that is already attached. It is not coming off. It is molded into the actual trunks. But the cape itself, well, let's work on the head first. And without any need of heat, it just it pops right off. We will work on the helmet using some rub and buff, the gold, and then dry brushing a little bit of silver over the top for some wear and tear. And if you push over these pauldrons, you can actually just remove the arm. And now those butterfly discs are in there pretty tight. We'll remove those a little bit later. And let's pull off the other arm and just holding it at the shoulder. A little twist and turn, there it is. And now on the legs, right at the joint, just hold on to the actual joint itself, pull out the peg, and that's it. And I didn't use a heat gun or a hair dryer, or I didn't have to boil this thing. Just remove the trunks, now you can tell it is a one piece unit with that belt. That's gonna be a little bit tricky. So we're gonna have to probably use a masking, a liquid mask to uh, block that off. Now the torso itself, the abdomen, yeah, the abs come off just fine. Uh, no heat needed, just a uh, pull and tug and then twisting it out. Now this is going to stay in there and that peg is in there fixed. The cape itself, not a whole lot of glue. That's great. How far does it go? A little bit of glue in the front. That's uh, a little tight now. And on the other side, that came off really easy. So if I pull this just a little bit more, there we go. And it looks like there's some glue underneath the actual emblem. Definitely gonna have to heat this part up because I don't want to tear it. Well, after heating it up, there is a tiny little peg that I could have torn if I did not heat it. But looking at this here, it now lets me know that it's pretty flimsy. I'm gonna have to glue that peg in there to install the cape and I'm gonna have to need or reuse that key in the back where the cape is to reinstall it. Otherwise, it's gonna be a floppy accessory. So there's a few things that we have to keep in mind as we work together on this cape and this repaint. And the trickiest part is gonna be the actual cape install, but I'll show you that later using the same video clip and I'll tell you what to do so that you don't have an issue installing the cape. Granted, if all you want to do is glue it on, yeah, you can do so. Let's get started with the project. So let's get started with paint. And I'm gonna use the black or this dark blue on the body as a base for some shadowing. So I'm only really going to work in the highlights and then tone in a few of the darker areas just to give it the sense that it's an actual lighter blue costume. Now as the joints here, they actually worked out really, really well. There's a lot of space in there. I didn't have to sand it or grind it down. I went ahead and just painted it and there's no paint rub. And then I went ahead and sealed it. Again, there was no paint rub. So I was really happy that it was that easy to work on this project. As you can tell, using the airbrush, I am able to keep the texture 
of the actual piece I'm working on. If I was actually painting with a standard brush, I may be plugging up all of that detail. I probably just have to do everything in a dry brush and that would take forever. So by using an airbrush, you can obviously advance the work that much quicker and you're gonna keep or retain a lot of the detail that's needed to make this figure look as good as it does. Now the paint that I'm using is actually a Model Masters Blue. I did mix in a Vallejo Silver to lighten it up just a tad and a two drops of white. So it does have a slight metallic look once you're looking at the finished paint. Now in camera, you really can't see that. You've got to see it in person. And again, I bent those articulations at the knees and the elbows, painted in the articulation. And again, there was no paint rubs. I was really happy to work on this piece. So let's take a look at the finished painted pieces and it took a few coats of paint to get it this blue and once again I just really worked on the highlights and a few of the tones uh, in the shaded areas. I primarily used the black plastic as my actual shadows. So if you want to just paint it as an angle from the top that'll be fine but you're gonna have too much of a strong shadow you're gonna have to fill it in now let's remove some of this tape to see how well to see how well I masked it off against the gold and the gold I did cover with the rub and buff and it was just such an exact color that you're really not going to tell the difference except maybe on the sheen or reflection of the surface but it's really hard to tell on camera in person you can actually tell that it's a brighter sheen than the plastic and I did go ahead and cover this with a Tamiya X22 to give it an, an even glossier look but uh, looking at how this turned out I'm pretty happy with it now you're gonna have to keep some of the leftover paint to fill in some very tiny crevices with a fine tip brush and those are the little details in the gloves design this is the actual look at before and after of the repaint only. We still need to work on the cape and the actual helmet, but take a look at the body paint itself. It has a much lighter blue on the right side, and of course the standard original blue on the left. Personally, I really like the way this looks, but we still need a cape. So let me show you what I did to make the cape. I am using the same diagram or grid that's on my cutting mat. And I've cut this into a seven by eight. I don't need it to be eight by eight because I'll have it too long. It's gonna hang off the back and it does not come over the shoulders. So I'm gonna pin it together just to hold it as I make my cuts and do some sewing. And just be very careful if you use pins because it will show on the decorative side if you've stabbed it a few too many times. So just be very cautious and place them in strategic areas that are not going to be as visible. In this case the visible area is going to be the blue and the yellow is going to be the interior. I'm going to have the yellow facing the camera so you can easily see the markings. I've already cut in about two inches on each side at the top coming to the corners at the bottom and I've curved out the bottom edge. Now, this is going to be a hidden wire in a hidden seam. So I want a pocket on the edges to hold the wire and one 
stitch on the bottom. That's going to be the closest we're going to get to a hidden seam. Now we have both decorative edges or faces facing each other. So the actual cloth itself is what you are looking at right now. And both of these are a pleather and it's sort of a stretch pleather, but it's not very thick. It's actually very thin. There's more material than there is a plastic coating on the material itself. So it makes it very flexible to work with. So this is our bottom stitch for the, actually the side stitch or first part of the pocket. I'm gonna leave the strand or the excess string uh, that I ended up stitching with and sew the other half of the pocket. And because it is thin material, the sewing machine may catch it. It may get caught. You may have to, well, unsnag it and then restart your process. So just take your time with it. Make sure that you get it correct and don't force the machine to do something it doesn't want to do. Now, once you get that foot started, in stitching then you can stitch in the actual pocket if you make it too narrow that wire will have a hard time sliding through to the edge so make sure you at least have it a eighth of an inch wide all the way through so that you can actually slide the wire without any snags it doesn't have to be perfect or neat it's going to be on the inside it will never be seen now you'll do the same for the opposite side and it'll look just like this. Now, the two stitches that you see at the corners there, that is a double stitch, and that's what's gonna lock it in so it doesn't unravel. There should be a button on your machine that will reverse the stitching, and then you can go back over that same reverse stitch so you can lock it in, and that's how you make sure you don't unravel your cape. Now, here it is on the left side without the wire. On the right hand side, it now has a wire in that pocket that I made. And of course the bottom is just ironed out so that you have a flat edge. There is no wire at the bottom. If you have a wire at the bottom, you will not be able to have a relaxed look. You'll have to have it in flight all the time. So this is what it looks like in flight and I've gone through a few poses to see where the cape needs corrections and I've found a few and there's going to be one at the bottom of the cape which is right now in flight at the top right spinning around. There's a wire sticking out it didn't catch in the pocket correctly the seam came apart and then the seam right at the cape right at the shoulder is coming apart. I didn't iron it close enough to the seam so there's a really big gap so this is prototype cape number one let's go on to prototype cape number two and let me show you the corrections that I made so that you truly understand what happened sometimes I have to make three or four capes so let me show you the corrections that I made and here is one of them that needs attention Right at the shoulder where it connects with the wire, it was too loose, too big of a gap. I closed off those gaps at the seam, ironed it really, really neat this time. Take a look at how messy this one is. It's just, it just slipped on me and I just don't like the way it looks. Now the bottom edge looks great. It matches the new one. So we've got a clean, crisp edge with a sharp pointed corner for the cape. And I do like that. Now moving on to the other side of the cape with the other problem and that was the wire at the bottom corner. Look at this. It, the pocket on the inside didn't hold. The stitching gave out or I missed it, whatever. I fixed it on my second prototype and it's ready to go. So now let's look at the figure with the cape corrections. Oh. It looks way better. And in this pose, the cape looks really different. Now, each one of these poses is really to test out where the cape has issues. And that's what's most important when you make a cape, simply because when you pose it, you're gonna see those mistakes or it's not gonna hold up. And in all of these poses, that wire is actually embedded into the body. That's the only way it's going to hold up the weight and it's not going to twist and turn. 
And even though the material is light and it is a small cape, if you don't anchor the wire, the wire will not hold the pose. It will twist and turn on you and you'll be endlessly frustrated posing this figure. So the best thing to do is to actually remove that entire shoulder pauldron as you saw earlier and you're gonna have to well let me show you on the next clip so you can truly understand what the cape install is because it is actually tricky it is not your common cape install this took me several attempts to get it right especially to get it to look right because there's two pieces of material that we're dealing with not just the one so i'm going to have to show you what it is that i did so that you have an easier time working with your figure but let's take a look at this clip and i've got a little surprise for you Even though this is a commission piece, I will be offering a few of these capes to the general public and they'll be a little bit different just to keep the commission piece that much more, well, more customized. So if you are wanting a cape for your figure, I'll have them for you. I've got three different flavors, $25 shipped, I've got a textured cape, at the point of making this video I've got two of these left, and I have four of the yellow because I know a lot of you have the first issue of Dr. Fate. And of course, I have the standard color of this figure and that has no texture. But either one is $25 shipped to you. So the important thing to know is that once you get one of these capes, well, how do you install it? That's a great question. And that's what this clip is for right here right where my thumbs are you'll want to slit open the black and the silver away from each other now this key that's here at the bottom you want to keep it so you want to cut around it at the base of it and all the way around because you want to be able to hold those shoulder pauldrons in place and besides if you have that second material slit underneath you need to hold it in place as well you can't just glue it on if you cut around it to fit that key, it will be better. Now the material, which is gonna be either the textured or the blue or the yellow, that is gonna be pushed into the slots that you cut in between the yellow and the dark blue. So you're not gonna cut the cape off at that part. You're just gonna cut a slot to push the material through. And then on the inside here, where you see those two curves, you can put glue in there. That's where the material is going to show up. Now, right here where my, my forefinger is, you can glue in the top portion of that blue material to hide that key or that peg. And then the yellow that's gonna be underneath or gold will be hidden underneath the armor. So, now as you take a look at these capes, I will leave an excess of wire at the top for you to be able to push it through those slots and be able to glue it into the back of the figure. Let me take you back to this part of the video. See the slots where the actual pauldrons will lock into? There's no glue in there, only at the very front of the chest. Well, those slots are where you want to actually attach your wire at the end of that slot. And you'll have to super glue in that wire. I left the excess wire so that you can determine how deep you want to inset those. I wouldn't go any further than maybe a eighth of an inch with some super glue. But I left an excess wire so that you have plenty to work with so you just need to cut or trim it down to what you need. Let's take a look one more time at how the back of the cape should look like. If you cut those slots correctly, it's only along that black and gold edge and it's just enough space to tuck in the material. You can glue it on the opposite side or on this side if you like, but very carefully. Do not get any, any glue on the cape. Once you've got it done, you can glue the gold portion underneath to the opposite side 
or to the actual body. It's up to you. Once installed, your cape should look like this on your figure, and then you can really enjoy displaying it. And of course, I hope this video helped you out, and I hope that you enjoyed or learned something today. And if so, give it a comment, let me know your thoughts. If you still have questions on the installation, let me know, and I can hopefully send you out a personal clip for you to follow. In the meantime, keep customizing those figures, and we'll see you here next time.